Welcome back to Environmental Economics for this fourth lecture in this series. Today we will look into economic theories on so-called optimal extraction of natural resources and we will consider different ways to obtain estimates for the value of nature. We will do so with the help of three papers. I will make heavy use of quotes from Cairns to explain Hotelings rule and the Green Paradox. Afterwards, we will dive into the economics of renewable resources. We will examine concepts such as the tragedy of the commons and maximum sustainable yield. Here, I will be resorting to a review by Stevens. Finally, we will go over some different practices of monetary valuation of natural resources. And we will use Callis et al. to comment on when this valuation may or may not be desirable. Non-renewable resources are also referred to as exhaustible resources. A typical example here are fossil fuels, but one can also think of minerals. The economics of exhaustible assets presents a whole forest of intriguing problems. The static equilibrium type of economic theory, which is now so well developed, is plainly inadequate for an industry in which the indefinite maintenance of a steady rate of production is a physical impossibility and which is therefore bound to decline. How much of the proceeds of a mine should be reckoned as income and how much as return of capital? What is the value of a mine when its contents are supposedly fully known? And what is the effect of uncertainty of estimate? Suppose the mine is publicly owned. How should exploitation take place for the greatest general good? And how does a course having such an objective compare with that of the profit-seeking entrepreneur? How can the state, by regulation or taxation, induce mine, the mine owner to adopt a schedule of production more in harmony with the public good? To illustrate the importance of these questions in a setting different than fossil fuels and climate change, consider the following video by Nowdis on the history of Nauru.